Here's how I 3D kitbashed a grot fart balloon. Overture sent me some air PLA filament, and I thought a great showcase of that would be an air balloon. The air PLA is a low density foam PLA, which is about 80% less dense than normal filament. This stuff is great for prints that you want to be light. For example, I printed this spaceship from Second Dynasty with the filament, so it wouldn't be too heavy to carry around. Check it out using the link in the description. Alright, now on to the kit bash. First, I went into Thingiverse and looked for a hot air balloon file that would be easy to print. I went through a couple of files, but settled on one without a basket, which would allow me more room for customization. I had a funny image in my head of instead of a burner, having a goblin holding a match and farting to create the flame. Contrary to popular belief, there isn't really a goblin model out there doing a handstand and farting onto a match, so I had to 3D kitbash one. Printed Encounters Posable Goblin Blender File was a perfect start. I deleted his under ruse to provide maximum gas release. Also, I skilled his legs and booty up a little bit. I didn't want him to be fully naked, so I brought in a torso from Kyoshineku Miniatures Space Goblins, and, in sculpting mode, used the elastic deform tool to stretch and pull the torso into place, trying to match the posable goblin as naturally as possible. I also brought in a head from the same Space Goblin kit to better match the other goblins that they release. I parented the new head to the posable armature by selecting both the head and the armature, going into pose mode, shift clicking the neck bone, pressing control plus P, and then parenting to bone. Then I got to posing. Once I was happy with the pose, I exported it and brought it back into the hot air balloon project. The main plan was to do a lot of printing out bits and putting them together later, so a lot of the next stages in Blender are just planning. I added a turret from a Station Forge biplane, a shantytown platform free from Terrain for Print that I scaled down, and another goblin to man the gun. I should have probably made the match in Flame in Blender and printed it out with the model, but instead, I took a little piece of printing supports to act as the match, and glued a little teardrop of green stuff for the flame. I printed both the platform and balloon with the Overture Air filament. I also did a little science -y test by printing out a second balloon using normal PLA, and weighed the two. The air PLA weighed 30 grams, and the normal weighed 36 grams. A good 20% heavier. If you have a big object, I can definitely see how this would add up. And especially if you're printing a flying model that you'll have to support using rods, like this air balloon. I printed out a few other bits using resin, like a deck to go on top of the platform. It had a pretty wild print failure, but since this is a grot vehicle, I didn't think it would be that big of a deal. I also printed out a barrel for the farting goblin to do a handstand on. Then, it was just a case of super gluing things on and adding texture paste where I wanted later to make it look like rust. The great part of kitbashing orky stuff is if there's a gap you need to fill, you can fill it with anything and it'll look okay. Like this gap between the top deck and the platform. I used a cut off piece from a raft and slid it under.
Then I straightened out paper clips and fit them through the holes in the balloon to act as the air balloon suspension lines. I'm gonna paint the envelope separately so I didn't bother cutting them to length. I secured them in place using green stuff. This is a real ugly stage. Then I took some watered down Mod Podge and covered some squares of paper towel and made patches for the balloon and made a skirt to cover up the ugly paperclip suspension line connections at the mouth of the air balloon. It's great having an extra light balloon so I don't have to worry about it getting too heavy when adding some pizzazz. I finished off the suspension lines by wrapping twine around the length of them. Also, since we've already been scraping the bottom of the barrel with all the potty humor, I decided to make a little toilet seat out of squares of cereal box to look like a crudely built seat, and toilet paper out of a rolled up length of paper that I covered in Mod Podge. I had to use a little glob of green stuff to attach the seat. I'm not sure if it's the brand, or if it's because it's really humid out, but I was having a lot of trouble with my super glue this time around. I then used twine and glued another toilet paper roll to the end of it. This was insanely fiddly, but I think it turned out great. Another insanely fiddly step was making the sandbags hanging off the side. I first made curved teardrop shapes out of green stuff, and then placed a squished disc on the top to make the opening. Once they were cured, I dabbed a little super glue at the seam and tied twine around it. I tried a few different methods for this. I first used chain and super glue. I put some super glue on the end of one sandbag and draped the chain off the side of the platform at an angle. I used sponges to help hold it up into the air. It didn't work too great, so please let me know if you have a better method for making chains hang in something other than a straight line. This was pretty tough, and eventually it worked by using texture paste to stick the chain to the sandbag. I let it set overnight, and I think it doesn't look too bad. I also used guitar string and stabbed one end of it through a bag. This worked better than the chain, although I had to use texture paste instead of glue to attach it to the platform because glue doesn't really stick to guitar string that well. I also realized that people are going to be able to see the bottom of the platform, so I glued on some granny grating, pieces of raft, and some screen. Also, I added a pipe. Who knows what it does, but it's on there. I did a little finishing touches and it was time to paint. The grots were relatively simple to paint. I started with a zenithal highlight and then sprayed up from below with red to make the shadows warmer. Then I glazed on different greens. I really like sapling green from huge miniatures. I don't know why I didn't use a bigger brush for this, but here we are. I next mixed in golden yellow to highlight the skin. Then I took salmon red and painted around his lips and inside his ears. The goggle strap and matchstick were painted with burnt umber. Time for the lenses. I first painted the whole lens with antimatter black mixed with cardinal red. Then, with straight red, I painted the lower rim and upper rim, ignoring the middle and sides. Then, I mixed in a little orange and painted even less of the lower rim. To finish off the lenses, I added a little dot in the top left and a thin line in the bottom right with pure white. Not too bad. Next, I applied a green wash to the skin, a red wash to the mouth, hands, elbows and knees, lenses, and bee cheeks, and a brown wash to the goggle straps. I highlighted the shirt with white. The flame was painted by blending yellow into orange, 
into red, and then a dot of black at the top. Then a dot of white at the base of the flame. I tried to do object source lighting coming off the flame and liked the result, but yellow on light green is barely visible, so not really necessary. The orange glaze showed up a lot better. With the grots done, it was time to paint the balloon. I started as before with a zenithal highlight. I also airbrushed on some red ink to the envelope. That's actual balloon speak for the air balloon. To avoid having to do it by brush. Then, I painted all the metal bits with metal color steel and metal color copper. I went over pretty much everything brown with either skeleton horde or snake bite leather contrast paints. I painted the toilet seat with burnt umber. I decided to keep the railing white because it was kind of looking like PVC pipe. The barrel was messily painted red. Stippling and purposely leaving bits unpainted is an easy and quick way to make paint look old and chipped. I also painted random bits of scrap metal on the raft, red and blue. I used huge mini silver from their new airbrush paints line to paint rivets and the metal on the gun. It's good to change things up when there's a lot of metal going on. This made the gun stand out from the floor a lot better. I watered down some black to paint the gun's receiver and the tires. The chair got painted green, and the two boxes blue and yellow. I then washed the metal with Nuln Oil, and everything that wasn't metal with Agrax Earthshade. I then applied dirty down rust randomly on the metal. Make sure to shake the devil out of it to get it really mixed up and maximize the effect. After it dried, I took some orange and made some heavily rusted bits. I'm not sponsored or anything, but this stuff is legit magic. I finished the rusted metal by carefully dry brushing silver on the raised edges. After all the washes and dirty down effects were fully dry, I went around the raft and highlighted with the base color mixed with white or off-white. And that's the raft painted. For the envelope, i.e. balloon, I painted the patches different colors and then dry brushed everything with an off-white. I then made little stitch marks with a fine-tipped Sharpie. The Sharpie was having issues, so this isn't as strong as I'd like it, but I'll come back later and fix it. With everything painted, it was time to attach the envelope to the raft and mount it on its base. I started by creating the mount for it on the base from which it could be detached for easier travel and another use you'll see later. I drilled a three millimeter wide hole in the center of the base and glued in a three millimeter acrylic rod straight up. I also wrapped a little green stuff around the rod at the bottom of the base for added strength and let it set on parchment paper so it wouldn't stick to the table. I knew I wanted the balloon to be tilted a little forward and to the left so at an angle, I drilled up into the barrel in the center of the raft. It's important to drill a pilot hole first with a smaller sized drill bit so nothing splits. Resin can be very brittle and I didn't want all this hard work to be ruined by being impatient. I cut the rod to a length I liked and slid the raft on. I don't plan on gluing it to the rod. 
I like being able to take the balloon off. I then glued the grats on. It looks a lot more lived in with the grots on there. The very last step was to attach the envelope. I snipped off the excess on the suspension ropes, leaving more than I thought would be needed to fold around the rack. Then I fiddled with the balloon placement to make sure its opening was in the right spot over the flame. Marked where the ropes crossed the raft, then, with a needle nose plier, bent the ends at a 90 degree angle. I secured them with a little bit of green stuff. The hoop at the top was very useful and fun, because it could hang until the green stuff cured. After that, I added texture paste to cover it up and add a bit more strength. Rust effects finished it off. I have to say that the fact that this balloon had a little ring on the top to hang from, and was light enough to hang on almost anything was pretty exciting and cool. And with that, the Grot Fart Balloon was done. Thanks again to Overture for sending the air PLA to test out. I genuinely think that this wouldn't have worked nearly as well if the envelope was printed with anything heavier, especially if it was printed with resin. I'll definitely use the air PLA for anything that I plan on suspending in the air using rods, or hanging off a chandelier or anything that would be heavy to carry around. Thanks for watching! If you enjoyed, feel free to like and subscribe. Check out my Buy Me A Coffee if you're willing to support the cause, and get your name on a wall in graffiti. Leave a comment down below with any feedback or suggestions. Alright, bye bye